the Public Health Act came into force in 1975, and thereafter the following regulations were enacted under this act. The Nuisance Regulation, SI 10 of 1978, the Offensive Trades Regulation, SI 11 of 1978, Communicable and Notifiable Disease uh, Statutory Instrument, number 12 of 1978, Barbershop Regulations, SI 13 of 1978, Water Quality Control, SI 14 of 1978, Apartments, Guest Houses, Hotels, SI number 15 of 1978 and amended in 1983. Swimming Pools Regulation, SI 16 of 1978, Notifications of births, SI 17 of 1978. Bakeries Regulation, SI 18 of 1978. Transportation of Human Remains, SI 19 of 1978. Barracks and Tenements, SI 20 of 1978. Disposable of Offensive Matter, SI 21 of 1978. Sewage and disposable of sewage and liquid industrial waste works, SI 22 of 1978. Slaughterhouse regulation, SI 69 of 1980. Uh, the food regulation, SI 70 of 1980. Given this changing environment and increased demands, the Ministry of Health and Wellness have been actively pursuing the amendment of both the Public Health Act and regulations over the past 10 to 15 years. During that period, there were extensive consultation with a wide cross-sector of society and major stakeholders, which guided the preparation of the final document. These efforts were finally realized in July 2019, when the Public Health Act was amended and made provisions that include, but not limited to the following areas, beauty and wellness center, spa, massage parlor, body art facility, prohibiting or restricting the smoke from tobacco or tobacco products in public places. In February 2020, amendments to all the regulations outlined above were enacted. The revised legislation made provision for greater enforcement capability for key public health issues that are relevant and current in the, developing, in the development of the country. Under ideal conditions, regulation should be reviewed and amended at least every 10 years to ensure they are relevant to a changing environment and they allow for adequate enforcement. However, Neither the Public Health Act nor enabling regulations have had any substantial review and amendment over the past 40 plus years. During this extended period, there have been extensive changes to the developmental landscape of St. Lucia, resulting in major environmental impacts that adversely affect the health and well-being of the population. Also, St. Lucia has signed on to a number of international treaties, including uh, the World Trade Organization, International Health Regulations, the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, the emergence of new infectious diseases over the years, such as H1N1 and Ebola, has placed increased burden in ensuring management measures are in place to control the spread of these diseases. Further, the demands being placed on the Ministry of Health continue to amass, and there is high expectation by the public that there will be adequate response and resolution to their needs. With regards to the nuisance and offensive and hazardous trade regulations, the Environmental Division have registered approximately 2,045 public health complaints over the past five years. The nature of the, the majority of these complaints lodged by the public have to do with the following. Odor nuisance, 
wastewater disposal, solid waste disposal, air pollution, vectors including mosquito and rodent nuisances, animal rearing, pig pens and chicken coops, dog kennels, overhanging trees and vegetation, charcoal pit, mold growth, occupational health and safety, bed bug infestation, noise pollution, defective septic tanks, food handling, derelict uh, vehicles, smoke pollution, excreta disposal, and dead uh, animals. There has also been a significant increase in the number of trades which are categorized as offensive trades under the Public Health Act. The amendments are meant to address public health impacts of such trade in residential and highly populated areas. The public health impacts from many of these trades continue to create nuisances that adversely impact uh, the health of citizens, including vulnerable individuals with pre-existing medical conditions. Moreover, the regulation seems to create a balance, seeks to create a balance where such trades uh, can be carried out in a manner that will minimize the impact on public health, taking into consideration that there is no clear-cut zoning as most uh, areas contain mi mixed-use land development in St. Lucia. The spraying of vehicles, animal uh, rearing, charcoal making, for example, in residential areas, where the operators do not have adequate facilities to contain the hazards emanating from the operation continue to adversely affect the health of residents in these areas. This has resulted in the Ministry of Health uh, being inundated uh, with complaints. It is noteworthy that these activities have not only been the subject of many public health complaints, they have also proven to be extremely difficult to regulate and resolve. Therefore, the amendment has brought these activities under a legislative framework and allow for greater capability to enforce, thereby reducing the health impacts to employees and persons living in close proximity to these operations. It is clearly stated in the Offensive Trade Regulation of 1978, Section 3, that one, a person shall not establish an offensive trade without first making application to the Public Health Board. An application shall be in writing stating, one, the name and address of the person responsible for carrying on this offensive trade, the nature of such trade, and the address of the proposed premises. The Public Health Board or the, bo the Board of Public Health, before issuing a license, shall cause the premise to be examined. Therefore, the amended offensive and hazardous trade regulations, SI 80 of 2020, now strengthens the above stated position.